Good morning, my dearest brothers and sisters in Christ. May God be dealing with you in kindness and in mercy today as we start another day into our journey with him, for him and to him. There's a lot of speculation going on, I know. Please keep calm. We don't know for sure what things are going to be. But I thought I'd give you a little update. Today I I just looked at this weather report and suddenly noticed that without any fanfare today is, in Australia at least, the um, day of the equinox. The sun is setting at the exact same time as the sun is rising. That means there's exactly 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of night. That's the equinox. Now the Bible tells us that the first day of Nisan comes the first new moon after the equinox. For all of you that are following the eclipse, that happens to coincide with the day of the eclipse the 8th of April. So the 8th of April is not only the day of the eclipse, but it is also the day of the new, first day of the new year of the new month of Nisan, which is the day of the Passover. A lot of speculation that the eclipse seven years ago went over seven cities of Salem. This eclipse is going over seven cities of Nineveh, one of Rapture and one of Jonah. All of these things could be coincidental, but they might not be. Because God did say a wicked and adulterous people look after signs. And that is what the world is looking for. It doesn't mean the signs aren't there, but it does mean that he does that not for the believers, but for the wicked and adulterous. It's a warning. Jesus said he will give them the sign of Jonah. Okay, all of this comes very close. If it is truly the sign of Jonah then what do we expect to see Jonah had a mission so if you truly believe that this is the the time what should you be doing you should be preparing you should be preparing your heart you should be preparing your family you should be preparing your neighbors for this coming event whether they think you're crazy or not, it doesn't matter. If you truly believe this is the event, then your heart should be really focused on getting as many to Christ as possible. I'm speaking this to myself as well as the Holy Spirit directs. But if that day comes and goes, are you going to drop down and, no, it was wrong, it was wrong. What was the sign of Jonah? Jonah was held back for three and a half days and nights. And then he had to preach. He preached for three days. It took him three days to, and nights to cross over Nineveh. Then the message was that if they do not repent... They have 40 days until judgment. In 40 days, judgment one way or the other will fall. Therefore, is this the total doom of America? Depends. Is America willing to repent? If we're taking America as a biblical warning. So, 40 days before the judgment doesn't mean 40 days before the rapture. Rapture has no date except that God is coming on his appointed time. But judgments come with signs. So 
what will happen if the rapture doesn't happen then? Are you going to wait for the next time? Or are you going back into the world and saying he's never coming? Where are Where is he? They've been saying it for years. These are times of testing, testing of the strength of your conviction. Many are going to come to you with many very feasible, good, logical um, possibilities. You either embrace every one of them or you reject them all. But you never reject the Lord. It doesn't matter what date he's coming. You must be prepared. The bride was told to be prepared. You are to give your life to the Lord, not living in this world. You are to be as people set apart. You are to be his children, the children of Christ. He was given a, prog a progeny even though he never married and had children. We are his children. We are the ones he will come for. We are his bride. But to be the bride, you must be faithful. You can't be the five unwise brides, unwise virgins, because they went back into the world. They didn't, they weren't faithful. The five wise virgins were faithful. They did all to remain standing. You and I have a choice to make. There is a door that will be open. Which side of the door will you be on? Will you be going into the door of the wedding pavilion? Will he be hiding you in his pavilion, which is a wedding booth? Or will you be staying here? In all cases, the choice is yours. Rejoice for your king comes. But prepare because your king comes. Choose today who you serve. If dates come and go, don't be angry at the person that set dates because they're doing it in, in excitement. I too look at these dates and I too, I hope it is this. But will I be abashed down if it's not? No. I will say, oh, it's another day that we've got to get ready. Maybe someone wasn't ready. God will come when it's right. When the Gentiles have all come in, there could be still a group that hasn't come in. God knows. But in due time, he will tell us. And meantime, yes, we will look at different things, different seasons, and say, this fits, this fits. But are we pushing things in the wrong way? We don't know. Prophecy was not given for you to know exactly what's coming ahead. Prophecy was given that when it happens, you know you were told and it verifies itself. Many prophets come and they're false prophets and they tell you things are going to happen on such and such a date and they stake their claim on it. It's going to happen, it's going to happen. And when it, and God says that if a prophet speaks something and it does not come to being, you know it was not of God. And they were not speaking in God. So you were to reject that prophet. This is exactly the same thing. Many people will give prophecies and say, the Lord saith, the Lord didn't saith. There will be some that the Lord did say. I'm not denying that. But there will be, he said, there will be many false prophets. And you will not know it's false until it doesn't happen when they say. So you know it's false when the time passes, just as you know it's true when the time passes. So we have to be very careful with what we're listening to, 
we have to take everything that is said back to the word of God and we have to take everything back to the word of God with the Holy Spirit that they can help us to understand and in all things we must do it with faith and we must remain strong just because somebody tells you a false prophecy should not mean you turn away from the Lord. Just because somebody says it's going to be the 8th, the 9th, the 10th of this month, that month, the next month, if it doesn't come true, you are not to blame the Lord. They spoke out of their own mouth. It's easy to think you are speaking God's words. It's easy. Pride in a human is very deceptive. And we must fight against that pride. If we are not speaking it to God's glory, it's not of God. Because the entire book of the Bible is to God's glory. The whole creation of this earth and the stars and the universe, as we'd call it, is for God's glory. The firmament above us shows God's glory. Our own creation, the mere fact that our eye is so intricate, it would take a million computers the size of a building, even in modern technology, to create that eye. God's glory is all around you. And God in the flesh is about to come back. But first, he will come for his bride. Be prepared, my loves. Don't give up. Don't harden your heart because people are getting dates wrong. But be excited whenever there is something coming up. It should be inspiring you to say, well, if it is that close, I better get busy. If it is that close, I better make sure that I'm ready. I've slipped back a few times. Um, when you're ill, things you do tend to slip a little bit. Um, your mind wanders. And many of you are having that. But take, take an account of yourself today and say, he's coming soon. Let me be ready. Be ready, my loves. Because when he comes, you want to be ready. You want to be able to lift up your arms and say, when he says, who is with me? You want to be able to say, here I am, Lord. It is I, Lord. It is I, Lord. Come, take me home. That is the place we want to be, is home with our Lord. So be ready. If you've fallen back a little bit now, get yourself ready. I'm not saying this is the event. But they are all signposts along the way, my loves. It's all signposts, reminders. Look on these as the alarm bell. You know, when you put it on snooze. Um... Mine automatically does that. I, I hate that, but, th but that's beside the point. Imagine there's an event coming. You know that event's coming. So you set the alarm early because you want to get up and get ready. But you dozed off a bit and boom, there goes the snooze button alarm again. And you got a bit busy and then, oh, jeez, I'm just snoozing off again. Bang, there it goes again. Each one of these are like that snooze button going off again. But eventually it won't be the snooze button. It will be the real thing. Once it happens, you can't be getting ready. You must be ready. So let these reminders always remind you to prepare yourself. Don't lose heart because it doesn't matter how many reminders get bumped along. It does not negate the fact, and it is a pure fact, that Jesus is coming for his own. 
he is coming for those that have already placed their lives in him. He is coming to take them to his secret pavilion, which is the wedding chamber. And they will be with him forever. We desire to be with our Lord. Please be ready. And if it's not this month or next month, keep getting ready because there's always something you can do to help yourself or someone else get ready. Imagine if the person beside you was meant to come and nobody told them. And nobody told them. Somehow they lived in a bubble of the world and did not hear the gospel. You have the opportunity until he comes. But once he comes, that opportunity is gone. Then the left behind have an entirely different set of circumstances to face. It's no longer under the grace. It's under the law again. It will be a horrendous time. We may see horrific things before we go, but nothing will compare to what they will see. So praise the Lord in all your doings. Everywhere you go, remember to mention him so that someone who hasn't heard hears him. Remember to repent of anything left unrepentant. Clear your soul of things that you have done. You do not need to feel guilt. Once you have repented, the Lord has forgiven you. You may pass that guilt away because he said, I will forgive you and it will be remembered no more. He's not going to remember it, so you don't have to. Put it in his hands. Wear his yoke because his yoke will lift you above it all. Put yourself in his hands and he will carry you through all the hard times. And love him because he loved you first. Prepare yourselves, my beautiful bride, for your king comes. Amen. God bless you all. If this be the, the time, God be with you and you be with your God. But if this be just another signpost along the way, stay strong. Be faithful a bride must be faithful you cannot be wandering you cannot be wandering a bride is a faithful faithful creature and you are the creation the creature of god so be faithful to your maker he loves you this is evident he gave his own son to become flesh to dwell among us he lived our life proving that he was worthy he took on all of our sins on the cross he bore our wounds he bore our iniquity he bore all of our punishment on himself he died he lay in the tomb for three days and three nights and he rose again, taking up life again, showing that he is the life, he is the truth, he is the word. And showing that when he says, I will come and receive you unto myself, it is true. There is nothing the Lord has said that is not true. So put your trust in him. Don't trust in yourself. You can't get there, but you must repent. You must repent because if you truly believe in him, you will do as he said and he said repent. Right? You will do his will. 
You will love one another. You will not backbite all the time. You can rebuke. You can um, warn. But please do not backbite people. Do not gossip. Be faithful, be truthful, be honourable and righteous. For the, the grace of God teaches you how to be righteous in this wicked world. Be holy because he is holy and be ready because he comes. So glory to God in all his, his creation. I pray that he will make his face to shine upon you. He will give you such joy and such peace beyond all understanding. He will carry you on his wings and he will raise you above the earth. And we will be together one day with him forever. May the love of the Lord shine down upon you. He loves you beyond all imagination, before, beyond all understanding. And I love you too. And I pray for you. And I pray for everyone. All that can be saved, may they be saved. And I pray for Israel. I pray for Israel because you and I know what happens during Jacob's troubles. Do you wish that on your worst enemy? I know I don't. But God, he said, I will come back for them and he will return and rescue them. But only a remnant, one third, That's heartbreaking. Two thirds are lost. He knows the end from the beginning. But he is faithful. He is loving. And he is a just God. And I desire to see him with you very soon. God bless you all. Maranatha, my dear brothers and sisters, may the Lord be praised in your household, in your heart. May the angels sing to you their songs of peace and love. And may they praise the Lord on high with their voice. Amen. <laughs>